Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 199. On this show, we showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else the gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Chad Wallace from the Firearms Radio Network, your source for broadcasts for shooters, hunters, and all things firearms related. In this show, we'll be discussing the 2A Armament Athon Review, if I pronounced it right. Uh, we'll discuss the new Ruger AR and the new X-Tech training gloves. And tonight on the podcast, it appears that we had Zane, but who knows where he went. So, Oh, he's back. <laughs> oh, wait. Look. He's back. I'm back. So we have, so we have Zane. We have, we have Rob. Uh, we have barking dogs in the background. Oh, and and Tony. So that's who we have. Uh, what did you guys do in firearms? I'll let somebody go and I'll beat some dogs. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> He's not really going to beat dogs. Man, <laughs> Man, I hope he is. Leave his mic out. He's going to mute it like a chump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go beat my dogs, but I'm gonna mute it. Hold on. Uh, I had some fun. What row, Shaggy? What row? Chad's been drinking again. <laughs> hey, um, what I did this week was picked up this new uh, SKS type. 177 pellet rifle it uh has a fixed barrel it's not a break barrel it has it's under lever that's what they call them uh 177 is not really that powerful and it really has very small sights on it um pretty much it's like an sks training rifle um i put i don't know 100 rounds through it, maybe a little more. If you know anything about single shot break barrels, that I mean, not break barrels, but single shot air rifles, that took a minute. It was a lot of fun, though. Um, old dude, old eyes, outside range, 15 yards is our minimum. So at 15 yards, I was able to shoot um, a one inch group, one inch 10 shot group. See, a lot of people want to talk about three-shot groups or five-shot groups. That's great. You can get lucky on those. But a 10-shot group, you're putting in work, and that's really you and the rifle. You know what I mean? Um, that's what I did with that. It was a lot of fun. Um, picked it up as part of a deal of mine, something else. And either I got a $100 deal on a break barrel shotgun, or I got both for $50 each. I don't know how you want to put it. <laughs> but that's what I did with that air gun rifle. Then I picked up. Matador Arms sent me their new uh, Sabretooth Mark II. And the difference is with the Sabretooth Mark II, it's Jersey legal. I did not have, when I built this, I didn't have to leave it with Sean in Pennsylvania because with the Sabretooth Mark II, it, hold, it can take everyone's magazine and you can use your fixed magazine. The original fixed magazine can be used in it also. And, um, I put a hex mag, I got a hex mag pistol grip, which is uh, different. It can be at different angles, which is really awesome. Hollow Sun sent out the red dot and the Coupe de Grassi. Yeah, that's right, I speak French. Is a law tactical folding stock adapter because it works on this, anything that take, I'm figuring, now this is just me assuming because I was able to use it on a Canadian made um, SKS chassis that takes M4 stocks that the Law Tactical Folding Adopter does work on here and it works on here great. It locks up really tight and it stays locked. <clears throat> Even when I'm doing this, it's not swinging when I'm shaking the rifle up and down with it folded. So why would I do this? Because I've made something that's Jersey legal, kind of foldable in a very small package. And uh, it's a lot of fun and it's modernized. And I'm sorry, but at this point, just continually building ARs for yourself is kind of friggin' boring. So this is something you can build, especially if you're one of those guys that have an older SKS from back in the day. So that's what I built with this, and I'm going to be busy the rest of the week, so I won't get a chance to go out and shoot it. And I think I'm going to put a lot of rounds through it. And, oh, the cool thing is, unlike when you put one of these um, folding stock adapters on an AR-15, 
I can, uh, which you can only shoot it once and they don't even recommend that. I can shoot this all day folded. <laughs> because it doesn't really use the buffer system. So that's pretty cool. I can shoot it like I'm in the 18. <laughs> no, you shoot like that anyway. You never hit anything. I never hit people. I hit everything else and blow cars up with single rounds from, you know. Okay, over, okay. Over rats, right? I just just making sure you're <laughs> old enough, old school that you remember that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did this week in guns. Well, uh, I didn't. Uh, since these guys are muted, I didn't do anything except ship to ship Tony some stuff. Oh, you shipped me some cool stuff, dude. Thank you. And I didn't do anything. I told you I was tied up with uh, hurricane restoration, and uh, work just got real, real busy for me. So I'm kind of swamped with that kind of wonderful crap. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of figured. Zane's well, I went to the range. How about you? <laughs> Did I you have the to range. use an airboat to get there? No, we had our water subsided pretty, pretty, pretty good. So um, I went out with a couple friends. Um, and we blew up a little Tannerite because that's always fun. Um, and there's a there's a he brought up a, a, a type of binary. I don't think it was actual Tannerite, but a type of binary that's designed to be used with 22. Um, so it'll it can be set off with much lower velocity rounds. Uh, that stuff was pretty cool. I, I put a short clip of that stuff in, in I want to say the this week in guns page or something. But um, yeah, we shot all kinds of stuff. Uh, of course, ARs and Glocks, but a uh, bunch of 22s, MP5 clones, you know, that kind of stuff. So, good times. Yeah. And of course, Sounds blew up sweet. a lot of Tannerite because. Hey, wait, rule number one a bad day at the range beats a just good about day at work. anything else I can think of. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, I now have we're... to agree. Yeah, I think we all agree on that one. Mm -hmm. All right, case bits. goes. Podcast is over. Let's go home. Yep. <laughs> uh, bandwidth sponsor is Patriot Patch Co. Imagine that. They're still sponsoring us, so that's a good thing. Uh, new patches. Seriously, new pre-orders are up. Hmm, I wonder who added that for pre-order. And the patch of the month, I got. I actually found it. And... It is later Lady Liberty, so if you want to sign up for that, you can sign up for that. Uh, it looks like there are some Mr. Guns and Gear patches for pre-order. There is the Tacola Flat Dark Earth patch for pre-order. There's the Real Man Carry 40 millimeter for pre-order. And a couple of shirts. One's the AR-15 podcast. So that's what they have on pre-order. Uh, anything hey, else? By the way... That real man yeah. carry forty. That real man carry forty millimeter shirt looks uh, sweet. I mean, the pre order looks sweet. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the, yeah. Yeah. I saw that. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, listener support program. Uh, go to firearmsradio.tv slash pledge gun and gear review podcast to pledge your support for us. If you want to support any of the other shows on the firearms radio network, you can go to firearmsradio.tv slash pledge. If you are shopping Amazon, use our affiliate link at firearmsradio.tv slash Amazon. And the black bag resources, Simon says train shipping code for free shipping. Everything you order under that code gets given to Tony for the two a four E diversity shoot. So you can support Tony that way. I guess Yay. and support and support Sean if you want to support him that way too, and I guess since there we're moving right along, we are into the main topic. And guess what? I actually have a review. It's amazing. <laughs> I know. So <laughs> we'll be talking about. I will at least the. It's the two A arm armament, Athon. Handrail, handguard, rail, whatever you want to call it. So I'm waiting for my slow computer to come up so I can tell you more about this thing. I actually took the upper off the rifle because it's easier for me to show it on the video that way. And we know 
everyone has an AR-15 or should by now. Uh, so that brings us to 2A Armament. Uh, they produce a whole bunch of stuff out of Idaho. Uh, complete rifles to rails to basically all kinds of accessories for them. Uh, they sent me their 7-inch Athon rail handguard. I don't know what they call it a rail, I think. It has M-Lock slots, so... One thing I did notice on their website, it only comes with M-Lock slots. So I think maybe they were talking to Ryan, but I'm not sure. Uh, this rail has some kind of interesting design features. Uh, the first thing I noticed, I don't know if this will do it, is it has scallops in the top pick rail to help reduce weight and they actually did a really nice job it looks pretty nice that way uh, it does feature a full top rail no matter which length you get they are pretty much all the same this is just happens to be a shorter one uh, under the pick rail there's lightning holes kind of straight through they're not quite holes they're kind of a little oblonged so there is that uh, they help vent some heat away you know, there's flats at 90, 180, 270 degrees, you know, 30, 60, 90, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, for the M-Lock slots, uh, because this is a 7-inch handguard, there are only two M-Lock slots, as you can see. But they also, at the front and rear, offer QD holes for the QD mounts built in. So that's a plus also. Uh they also reduce more weight on this thing by milling out these, I don't know what you want to call them, half moon lightning holes. Uh, and the other thing is, even though it's not marked in white, the rail itself has extended T marks on it. So it goes from your, your standard upper receiver and then it just keeps going with the T marks. So that's kind of a neat little plus. <laughs> Uh, installation of this thing is one of the easiest handguards I can say I've installed. So basically, you take the old parts off. I'm just going to make this pretty simple. Uh, then they supply a titanium barrel nut. So basically, you screw the barrel nut on per specified torque, torque it down, proper torque specs, and then it's got a bunch of little like half moons cut out of it. So you line one of those up for the gas block and that part is done. Then you just slide the rail on and because of the design, the way the barrel nut is and the way it has, I'm going to try to get a decent picture of these online. It has these two angled set screws in the side that you tighten down and what they do is they tighten against an angled part on the nut so you can position it you just line the top rail up tighten these four set screws down and it's mounted uh, i did put thread locker on them of course when you tighten them down they are flush so they don't stick out and hang up on your hand or anything like that uh, they do go into aluminum and they are steel screws so I would not tighten them super tight with anything that you can tighten them tight with but I didn't have any trouble with that and it's on there tight and doesn't want to go anywhere uh, <laughs> the funny part is is this rail actually saw a lot of use since it's been on here because I was having other problems with this rifle, none of which was caused by the rail or the installation of the rail. So I shot it a lot, and that helped with me being able to give it a good run. And I'm not too happy with my dog. Can you guys hear it? I don't see anybody shaking their head, so I guess not. Um, yes. Yeah, we can hear it. We can hear it, but it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, well, it is in the background. He's saying he likes your guns and he likes your review, and you're doing a great job. Keep it up, Chad. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> whatever. And give me some treats when this is over with. I want some treats. 
That's exactly. I could probably let you're him no, in you're here. You're a nice pink fly. dog, video. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why my daughter's not taking care of the dog, but that's a complete different story. Uh, so by shooting this a lot, I noticed that if you dump a magazine fairly quickly, you don't even have to dump it all that quick. The handguard does get pretty warm. It is pretty small diameter. I don't, can't really tell. It's like 1.5 inches or not even that on the outside. It's like one point, one point, yeah, it's like 1.6 inches roughly. Uh, it's 1.3 on the inside, but so it's fairly small, so it does get warm. Uh, if you happen to have a registered lower, uh, you might want to wear gloves with this actual handguard because it does get warm. Uh, besides that, the things, it performed great. Uh, you know, I prefer, I actually like the smaller diameter handguards because I can get a good grip on them with the size of hands I have. Uh, so, you know, some of the larger ones I don't care for, but that's personal preference. My, this thing, they do a great job deburring it. Uh, some other handguards aren't, these are really nice. Everything's smooth. Nothing sharp. Even the receivers, even the top rail is pretty smooth. Uh, my only complaint is that it is actually only 6.7 inches long. So it leaves a little more of a gap than some other 7-inch handguards between the end of it and the. this actually has a fixed front sight base on it. Uh, that really isn't detrimental to how it functions but that's kind of my pet peeve with it uh i think they did an excellent job with this it is really dark black you can't really see it on here but it is darker than my receiver uh none of the pictures really showed it but eh, i think there's one in the review you can kind of tell but yeah it's a deep black anodizing so that's kind of nice it's, they did a really good job with that uh the claim to fame it is a lightweight ar-15 handguard uh the target market is anyone wanting a lighter weight m-lock handguard features and benefits it is made in the usa uh they use usa sourced titanium for the barrel nut uh, it has m-lock it's free floating qd mounts at both ends 1.3 inch internal diameter so if you've got a long one it probably won't fit most 223 suppressors uh so there is that but you, know, you kind of know that if you're looking at that style uh it is 6.7 inches as we said it has t markings and it only weighs 6.2 ounces complete uh that is for the seven inch uh if you get say a 15 inch say the 15 inch on their site is 10.7 inches so the various different sizes are going to give you different weights but it's still fairly light for what it is uh, other options or finishes you can get it in 10 12 and 15 inch lengths uh, I did not find any other reviews or any other quick what others are saying on it uh, the price point all the lengths are, if I remember right, are $179. I don't think it goes up if you get if you get the long one. Oh, yeah, it does. The 15 inch is 264 so it does go up. Uh, retail, I found it for $170 at Optics Planet. So if you need it now, go to 2A Armament or Optics Planet. Our rating... The pros are it is M-Lock. It installs easy. It has dark anodizing. I like the small overall diameter. Uh, I do like the full top rail if you like those. And the built-in QD mount is a big plus. Uh, the cons, I didn't care that it wasn't the full 7 inches in length. And it gets hot. So I gave it a score of 8, which is great. So now it's yeah. up to you guys to ask strange questions. Well, I've shot, I've not shot one of these, but I handled one at the uh, machine gun shoot 
<clears throat> up in uh, the first machine gun shoot, they had Stone Mountain. Uh, 2A Armament had a booth, so I met those guys there. And I handled their, what is it, ba Balios light rail? Um, yes, the other, the, the one there, I think they're starting to, that matches their upper or something. Yeah, it matches their upper and it also comes in key mod. If you're one of those people that want 2A Armament lightweight in a key mod. Now, what I did not know was somehow their measurements are off or something. It'd been shrunk because it's not as long as it says it's supposed to be. Yeah, I noticed on their website, th they say the length, and then it has in parentheses the actual length. Oh, okay. So that's great. So now you have exposed gas tube. Um, Any 7-inch hand guard uh, is going to have some on this uh, because you're only looking at – it's going to increase it to about where my finger is. Mm -hmm. So you're still going to – it's going to about half this distance. I'm going to guess that has to do with people using adjustable gas box. It might, but this is pressed all the, you know, it's carbine length mm -hmm. and it's right up against the block. So yeah. no even true. with an adjustable, it's going to be out front. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know, but they probably are thinking you're just going to run a standard, like use that on a pistol length or something with that goes over the gas block. Maybe what, but, with it being as light as it is and with that odd mounting system, is there much flex in it towards the end? So there, to because it, uh, I think I put it in the review and forgot to ask. There is literally no flex in this thing. Okay, so if I had got a good <laughs> hasty sling going on and let's say I was using a laser, it's not pulling my... I see Tony laughing over there. <laughs> no, and but, I, I know exactly what you mean because like... A 15 inch handguard, you get mm -hmm. some flex in the handguard when you pull them. Right. And, and if you're if you're running a like an inbus sight on or or a, some sort of a laser device, that can be a problem. Right, right. Uh, this this is one of the sturdier ones I have I have felt. Uh, okay. but especially for being as lightweight as it is, uh, it is very sturdy. Uh, I don't know if the angles in the way the mounting system is helps with that or not. But I... Yeah, I think one of the cooler things I saw with it was a scalloping. Uh, just, just they cut out everything possible you can cut out and still maintain structural integrity. I mean, that part's really cool. And I'm figuring it's awesome up until you drop your rifle in mud. Ooh, and, yeah. <laughs> and then it's Fill time to get busy with gaps for mud. Uh-huh. And now I'm thinking you got like a dishwasher. I don't know how a dishwasher works, so I'll just go ahead and say a toothbrush and a whole lot of time. Or a pressure washer. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, pressure washer. Just AK, just clean like an AK, man. Well, yeah, if pressure you, washer spray it. If you don't have this front sight post on here and you have a low profile mm -hmm. gas block, literally you can just take these four screws out and slide the whole thing off. And easy to clean. Yeah. Yeah, like Zane, old school, hasty sling. Yeah. You had the KD course. It works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying it don't. I just find it funny. I thought that uh, thing, you must, I don't know, maybe it's coming back. <laughs> now, Hunter, Hunter still used, uh, Hunter still used um, that technique a lot. There. Okay. Yeah, wrapping it okay. around your elbow. Yeah. And tightening it. Yeah, and, I mean, it works great. I mean, lightweight yeah. is gr lightweight is great so long as you're not sacrificing structural integrity. So that's correct. My, you know, that's. I think a lot of people are the, uh, no, having I a heard race from to fancy. get. Those. You said weight is weight is key. Nothing fancy is right. He is never wrong. Weight is key for everything. <laughs> well, I mean, they got there's this race to the bottom, you know, for lightweight stuff, and that's all well and good. Mm -hmm. But I, I especially but, with the popularity of laser devices nowadays, like for night vision stuff, which I don't have because I don't have that kind of money. But you start pulling your rail around, and at a hundred, I mean, if you can flex sixteenth of an inch at a hundred yards, how far is that throwing your front sight? Obviously, not your front sight base, but like if you have one connected to your rail, or if you're using a laser or something. So, yeah, what yeah, I find I, is, I is you. like you said, Zane, with the race to the bottom. Um, but it's also with equipment. And my thing is, once you get dependability out of the window, then what's the point of doing this other than to say you have the lightest weight, something or other, and you just turn. 
But hey, if it's a range toy, it's a range toy. I mean, we also have to get over this every time someone has a rifle. It, it's a go to war rifle. I'm not a go to war yeah. person. I'm fat and out of shape. I'm not a go to war human. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's quit acting like my, my, my rifle has to be the Terminator, but I'm the Stay Puff Marshal the man. <laughs> well, I, I, I like this. If you want to identify as that. <laughs> yeah, it it does, and it it is sturdy. So I will, I I know exactly what you're saying about the non-sturdy rails. So yeah, and this is actually one of, this is one of, it goes on my rifle that I pretty much use for everything. It's kind of a go-to rifle. So I'm I glad. Into their, I might look into their 15-inch one. I've been looking yeah. for a new rail. Uh, yeah, I got a couple of couple of places I found online that's less expensive than, of course, their main site, and I'm talking around two sixteen for fifteen inch. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I'll check it out. Which, yeah, yeah, the seven inch I don't think is a super popular one, and I don't. I noticed not as many companies anymore are making a seven inch rail. Yeah, it's funny as you as as things change and, and taste change certain things just fall off but then they come back so right now the whole retro thing is in if you want to build a uh uh m1 m16 a1 style or m16 a2 style that's the big thing now yeah oh, and i think go uh, be his dog. i think the super <laughs> shorties are, are falling out of favor uh with people and i mean yeah right it seems to be like i actually i was just having a conversation with some guys in another private group about SBRs and it pretty much it seems less than the 10.3, 10.5 is that's really as, as short as you want to go with uh with 5.56 five, and really 11.5 is from what, it, what the way it was explained to me once you go from 10.5 <laughs> to 11.5 you're looking at a 40 percent more dwell time so that's really your sweet spot I guess well I find I'm it no, funny I am that no expert by any means though so I sorry I'm on the internet I'm an expert um, I just find it. <laughs> I just find it funny that we continually have to learn the same thing over again. They learned the hard way in the first place years ago, but everyone thinks they're so much smarter. Look, you have a range toy. Uh, you have a gun that might work, might not, at a certain point, and and all this has been figured out years and years ago. You know what I mean? They figured it out with the, the predecessor to the uh, M4. I've, it's like the XM something EE. I forgot the name of it. But they figured out how, out how long these things had to be. And we keep messing around because we're somehow smarter. If you got a sub 10 inch barrel on your AR, you better be using 300 blackout. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I, but that, I mean, that once you get, for. yeah, once you get down past that 10 5, you're, I mean, at what point are you just throwing glorified 22 downrange? Which, if that's what you want to do, yeah. get a 22. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I just find it funny that people, again, you want to freaking create a fireball and be deaf and have an effective <laughs> rounds really go down range comparatively. And again, if you want to have a really short rifle, get a 300 blackout. And they were built for nine inches, and, uh, like what, between 10 and nine inches? They were built for short barrels. Yeah, That's well, why it, they it, uses it. A, it uses a pistol powder as opposed to a rifle powder. So it, it, it burns up in that eight to 10 inch barrel length. Yeah. I mean, get, get yep. the round that's built for it. Uh, quit being me too-ism. But hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Do, it, do what you want. It's your money. But, you know, don't, don't think you're, you know, have top of the line self-defense firearm. No, you're not. You made a compromise and kind of a bad one. Well, and that's the thing with the thing Zane hates is pistol caliber carbines. I mean, <laughs> if you're running those with like a, a seven inch barrel, you're, you're still gaining over a, a handgun. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> well, we know that. <laughs> any, any, understand, I'm not going to listen to the tactical sense of a dude that shot at a hurricane. <laughs> well, okay. Get, get away from me, you hurricane. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was Everybody great. else was that doing was one it. Of the uh -huh. Dude, it was awesome. I don't care. I showed it to my wife. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and she cares zero about firearms. So did you turn the fan the other direction for that picture or what? 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess we're into the product spotlight now. Since yay, yay, you guys, I put some stuff in here for everybody. Uh, well, yay. because I first up is the Ruger AR556 MPR. Yay, yay, uh, the MSRP. I love, N- I love, N- I love NPR. Yeah, no M. What? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, MSRP on this thing is eight ninety nine. Street price is about it's MPR, not NPR. Is six ninety nine. Uh, you can find it for a little less. I was just kind of glancing around the internet, and it looked like about seven hundred bucks street price. So we have yep. that. Uh, basically, I don't know. This it looks like for the price you're paying, it's right in there with what you're getting. So you know, it's yep. of course black. You get an 18-inch barrel, which, I mean, sometimes finding 18-inch barreled ARs is a little little odd. Uh, it does come with a free-float M-lock handguard. Uh, the twist rate's 1-8, uh, your typical everything else. Uh, it weighs 6.8 pounds. Uh, overall length is 35 or 38.25, depending on if the stock is compressed or not uh so it would be 3825 if you bought it in jersey uh, <laughs> it's yeah. a five groove it's a five groove groove barrel uh it has magpul moe furniture and stock on it uh hold on i got a text message from Ryan. he said yay <laughs> <laughs> you did not <laughs> uh it is a 15 inch. Lie to us. It, uh, it, it is a 15 inch <laughs> hand guard. <laughs> Jeez, I don't even know if I can get through this stuff. Uh, I'm going to skip out on all the other stuff. Uh, it comes with the Ruger Elite 452 AR two stage trigger. Uh, so they put their better trigger in this one. Uh, the M lock rails are three six nine o'clock. Uh, the barrels cold hammer forged. Uh, it's 556 five, NATO chamber, uh, crown plated bolt carrier, gas key, uh, blah, 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 Ruger muzzle brake. I wonder how that works. Uh, it is threaded half 28, so you can put whatever on it. It is come, does come with a Ruger P mag bolt, 30 ground P mag. Uh, let's see. What is there anything else I missed? Uh, yeah, with that 18 inch barrel, it's you're getting a rifle length gas system, which yes, I think is oh which yes, I think is a, yes, it's a lot softer shooting than a carbine length system. So for that extra two inches of barrel, you're getting a much nicer shooting, smoother. Yeah, yes, yeah, and it beats up beats up the gun less. Beats up the gun less. I mean, five. Let's not kid ourselves about the recoil of five five six. And, <laughs> but that said. <laughs> It's going to be less felt recoil, even, you know, less. Hey, so. hey uh, the, the gas if you could get it down to nothing, that would be well, great. Yeah. It says the gas key is staked, so I would like to look at it to see how well it's staked because... Well, they all say they're staked. The, the saint said it was staked, too, and I got to look at that. and mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, that was not... Well, I look at it this way. <clears throat> we, this is, this is my thing. I like the 18-inch barrels. Uh, I like old school. I mean, I was going to build a 20 inch. Now, 18 inch is a really sweet spot because it gives you a rifle length gas system, which again is softer shooting. Um, you still don't lose that much velocity, which means with that velocity gain, you get less. Uh, with with without the velocity loss, I think you get less drift at longer distances, and you get a flat flatter trajectory, and it's packing more heat again at further ranges. Uh, I like the fact that it's. Uh, free float truthfully this is kind of the thing that i would build anyway and this is stuff i've been looking at to build when i go and you know do my window shopping on palmetto state armory to get everything they have that's blimmed because it seems they they must have horrible quality control but um (laughs) because half of their half of their sales things are blimmed but (laughs) when i'm looking at it and i'm going yeah this is what i want i want an 18 inch barrel i want it free floated i want m lock um, of course, you want a state gas key. Cold hammer forged barrel is just like saying your car has wheels on it. 
I, yeah, I don't that's, know. I, I, that's not a selling point. That's, yeah, <laughs> but no, <laughs> they didn't waste their time by putting sights on it because everybody's going to throw the garbage away they put on anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Because you know people have to have really expensive sights instead of just you know practical working ones. Um, what else? Oh, the adjustable stock again. I mean, here's something you should write down. If you have a fixed stock, write it down. If you have something other than camouflage. Uh, cold hammer forge yeah that's a point um the rest of this stuff is what everyone else has now that trigger now i i've tried this trigger out just in the package and it's a nice trigger the ruger elite 452 ar trigger um it's a pretty sweet trigger and if they're throwing it in when you try to build one of these just by going in the checkout bin and putting something together again for the street price that you get this you won't get it from anybody else you know what i mean plus you won't get the factory warranty because that's what you'll get with these. That's what a lot of people don't understand. <clears throat> this, go, this, yeah. is, this is going to be a, this is, looks like a decent entry level rifle for someone who wants to get into the AR and maybe knows some upgrades or want to do, but is a little intimidated to do those. Yep. This is, this is, yep. this is perfect. Yeah. I mean, this is a direct competitor to the MMP Sport, a direct competitor to the Saint, if you will, and that new thing Savage just released. Yeah. I mean, it's MSR. <laughs> I like that. The, the MSR. Yes. The uh, Think Savage released. <laughs> here's the thing. With these guns, this is what most people do. And I'll go ahead and put it out there. Most people buy a factory gun and end up swapping parts out after they get into shooting it a little bit more. And then they go, you know what? I'm going to build my own rifle. Almost everyone buys their first rifle and then build the next one. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. different because I built my first one, but I don't even call that building it when I put together a lower and then bought a complete upper. But understand, you some people really need that adjustment period between, oh, my God, it's complicated, it's a rifle, it's a lot of parts. And then when you figure out that it's pretty much an adult Lego set and with a few hand tools, you can put this thing together and put really cool stuff on it. And truthfully, coming from Ruger, I think it's probably a solid upper and lower receiver set, and you can build anything around it anyway. So eventually you can get a R5 rifling barrel, rifle barrel or something like that or something from Faxon or something from, you know, different companies with a higher grade barrel if you want. Um, you can pick up other triggers, but this one is pretty good. I think it's a pretty good starting point and for most people, stopping point. Yeah. And, um, and I've heard a like- really... No, I, I heard a really good interview uh, earlier today with the um, I, the owner, the CEO, something I don't know of uh, Primary Weapon Systems, and uh, which for <laughs> for anyone who's listening who's not familiar with is a very very high AR, very expensive AR. And he made a he made a decent mm-hmm. point. He was he was talking about some of these you know entry level guns, and uh, his his point was we need companies to release things like this because. If people aren't getting into ARs, people aren't getting into high-end ARs either. So stuff like this is important in the market. And even, you know, guys that are releasing $2,500 rifles uh, even see a need for, you know, stuff like this. So I, I like it. Um, and I hope more companies, <laughs> I think, uh, you know. I find the freaking uh, high-end AR market needs to be there too. Because, <clears throat> but I find that most people don't shoot at the level they require these high-end ARs anyway, but they buy them because they can't afford them. And if you can afford a really nice AR, buy a nice AR. But I think what a lot of people go is, oh, well, this is lower end, so it must be lower quality. And I'm like, that's incorrect. Not, not yeah, no, I don't, I don't oh. think there's probably any. Now, again, I would want to take it apart and take a good look at it. Stuff like that before I say that definitively, because, like I said, with I took a saint apart and this, this for example, the stakes on the gas key were terrible, but that could have been just that rifle. But I agree with you; it probably is a well-made. Most of Ruger stuff is pretty well-made, so. Yeah, and and that's what I'm saying. And again, you can build your own rifle. You can probably come in at this price point. With shipping and free shipping weekends and stuff, I mean, you can play around with it and build this probably for the same point uh, price you can buy it at if you feel like doing that. But really, 
getting in, buying this thing, and taking it out and shooting it and having fun and actually learning about your rifle, nothing can beat that. And this seems, again, seems to be a quality rifle. And again, it has an 18-inch barrel. Um, I think they're cool. I really want an 18-inch barreled AR myself, lighter weight. Um, and it just brings different things to the table. That two inches does make a difference, I feel, um, in the AR. If they didn't, it wouldn't be there. Yeah, I, I I put this in here because I think it's one of the AR offerings that Ruger, you know, they have their super base model, but this one's kind of a good in-between. You put it out there, you know, I like 18-inch barrels also. Uh, I do like that they made this a 1 and 8 twist mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, if you're shooting varmints or want to shoot really light bullets, you it's not as hard as if it's a one in seven twist and same with the heavier bullets. If you have a one in nine, then you can't shoot the heavier bullets. So I think the one in eight was a good compromise that they made. Yeah. You can put almost anything that Walmart has on the shelf. Throw it. Right. And now I, I've put, I, I have a one in seven twist and it has a cold hammer forged barrel. No, but uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I was able to put inch and quarter groups together at 100 yards with iron sights. So uh, the twist rate is a great compromise because they used to be one in nine. That used to be the thing. But yeah, it, it, you can shoot lighter weight bullets. You can shoot heavier bullets. It's free float. It's probably really accurate or accurate as most ARs can be, especially with the better trigger. So you can probably go varmint hunting with it, no problem, like out the box. I mean, not out the box, but with, with some good glass. Yep. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't It doesn't come with sights. <clears throat> and it comes with a 30-round uh, Magpul magazine uh, how for much are, people uh, that live in states. That have their states. Uh, how much is a set of in-bus sights running? I think in the 30, 40 bucks. I mean, I think. So for 30 40 bucks you can get into a decent arguably set of backup sights and save up for an optic if you want. Well, I think yeah. you're looking at probably at 70 cuz they're about 30 bucks each, right? Are they? Oh, really? Yeah. It's been a while since so. I've purchased a set, so. I think yeah, I think but, the back the rear and I guess the, like 40 bucks in the front sights like 30 or 35 bucks. But just do what I did. Yeah, I just look it up right set. here. I did. Oh, when yeah, I never mind. Yeah. When I got my gun store, I usually dig through the uh the used bin where they sell or used or return bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Magpul sites are Magpul sites, man. Well, you gotta be careful thing. for the airsoft well, actually, knockoff crap, though. Airsoft. No, these, yep. are my, these are Magpul sites. And that's what sites. happened. Yes, yeah, the airsoft say Magpul too. I mean, I'm just saying be careful. I'm not saying you're tricked. I'm just saying be careful because the airsoft sites also said Mag say Magpul on them. And, and, and they're and, like nine ninety nine on Amazon. Yeah. But here's the funny thing. When I first did my AR build and I didn't have a rear sight, I used the one off my airsoft rifle because I just wanted to shoot it. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> it friggin' worked. <laughs> it worked well. I didn't put it through any long-term testing because it was just a stand-in until I got my sight in the mail. But I'm like, I'm taking it to the range, and I'm going to shoot it, and I'm going to shoot it with an airsoft sight, and I don't care. And it didn't walk. You know what I mean? It didn't move at all, actually. It was it was quick to zero, and it was good to go. I'm not suggesting it. I'm just saying it was a good stand-in. <laughs> Sounds like Ooh. a plan. Uh, but, yeah. The, the host of this show on the Firearms Radio Network just about any use of using Airsoft uh, <laughs> products on, on live firearms. Should you be stupid hey. enough to try something like this, you hey. assume all responsibility for such stupid acts. Yeah. And, 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 and I just say for butts. Why? Because Please, if people want to do, do want. it, they, yeah, they can do what they want. I yeah, mean, you can do what you want to do, but if you do something I, you know, stupid, don't come and sue me. Don't tell them we told you to do it. <laughs> if, no, don't. If, if, if you, if you, here. <laughs> there you go. Keep going. Keep going. My thing is this. <laughs> if, you hurt yourself, if you hurt yourself with an airsoft sight on your air, please videotape it before it happens so I can see how you could possibly <laughs> hurt yourself. Be so <laughs> stupid. I have seen uh, a video okay. of a rear sight coming off a gun and hitting, I believe it's our fearless network leader in the face. Um, so that's the thing that uh, happened. Hey, if it exists, oh. somebody's, somebody has injured himself with it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I saw a video. I saw a video of a 
<laughs> Smith and Wesson 500 Magnum. I saw that too. Yeah, <laughs> we, I think we all saw that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was so great. I was just talking to someone who goes to that range in Canada today that that incident happened at. And he said, if they're using a range gun, who knows what the problem would be, timing issues. Most people don't shoot the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnums more than like, you know, Once. 100 times a year. <laughs> A <laughs> hundred times, well, maybe even a box a year after each of your friends fired a couple of times. So when you have a rental gun that people are shooting a lot, if that was, again, the rental gun they have at that range, because he said they have a 500 Magnum rental gun at that range. Um, hey, maybe the timing was off. Who knows? But it was interesting. And I just wanted to bring that up because I wanted to get the heat off of me for using airsoft on AR. Yeah. Well, so, I saw I saw that video, and <laughs> the first thing I'm starting to watch it, I'm thinking, this is going to be one of these stupid videos where the guy shoots it and it comes back and like whacks him in the head and he goes unconscious or something. I thought it was going to be a double tap video, honestly, because I've seen oh, yeah. a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, d double tap those by accident. Right. But yeah, and yeah, and I was like, frightening. oh. Uh, well, okay, I guess we'll yeah, get into That was even better. <laughs> he should have been wearing a pair of these, and it might have helped. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so what we have now is the X-Tech Tactical Pistol Training Gloves. So what they are is they're parachuting gloves, as, as we all know, uh, but they're made to help new shooters basically know where to put their hands or as such they have like velcro on them and so when you wrap your hands around it you kind of it kind of velcros them together is what it looks like so you get the feel of where they're supposed to be that's what i got on it you know it's supposed to it says it improves accuracy safety and for new shooters I could see where it might help them, but my one one thing that I am skeptical about is is most new shooters I don't usually want them to wear gloves because they can't feel as much. That's just me. Uh but they kind of seem like a halfway decent I idea. I did watch their video which helped a little. Uh they come in, they're twenty nine ninety five, so it's not like they're super expensive. And You pair this know. with Springfield's grip zone and what can go wrong? Well, <laughs> they might grip don't even don't, don't even need an instructor at that point. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Tony, I'm okay. some more uh, uh, revenue. Oh, yeah. I, I say um, get a Springfield Armory with the grip zone. Get these gloves and get one of those targets <laughs> to tell you everything you do wrong. Oh, God. And, dude, you don't have to come take my class, man. You're just done. I mean, flinching, healing, just... too much trigger finger, too little trigger yeah. finger. Yeah. That's all you need to be a good instructor. These gloves, a Springfield Armory grip zone, something or other. And that, and a couple YouTube videos, you're golden. Oh, you're good, huh? Yeah. Well, I. <clears throat> I watched a video because, you know, I paid, I paid scant attention to what it really was. And I was like, oh, okay, another pair of gloves that tactical, Timmy, that tactical Timmy can rock out. And then I started reading what it was actually about and the fact that it, it's hook and, lo hook and loop, not Velcro. Because Oh, yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, can't say Velcro. Yeah, okay, can't say aspirin either. Or bear, shut up. Yeah, whatever. It's Velcro. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's Velcro, get over it. It's Tannerite, get over it. It's toilet tissues, whatever. Um, anyway, I saw it. I like the idea and, and it, it's pretty cool. Or I can just, you know, tell my students to grip the gun this way. Um, and you have to measure it for your hands or I saw that they had different hand sizes. Um, they don't have your size. Well, you've got to keep measuring your hands. So I've had students between little tiny 70 year old women and, and big dudes with big giant mitts. So, again, how many pair of $30 gloves do I pick up? Well, they only have four different sizes, so you only are yeah, picking up I mean, four. <laughs> yeah, so I'm picking, I'm picking up four different gloves, or I can just tell somebody how to position their hand each time because I'm an instructor and that's my job. Right. 
And on top of that, Tony, how many times have you set someone's hand and come back two minutes later and they're wrong and you reset? Them? Yeah. So I just don't see a set of gloves fixing that. I... Well, well again, they Velcro, is... they Velcro to each other. And I'm like, I'm finding that's not going to make someone comfortable having their hands Velcro well, together. I... <laughs> well, have you, have you ever had somebody so bad at holding a gun you just wanted to super glue the gun to their hand so it wouldn't pull out? <laughs> no. No, I wanted oh. them to leave the range. I, no. I, don't, I don't want them to hold a gun tighter. I just want them to go away. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to see how good this NRA insurance is. Uh, I don't want to see how good this NRA insurance is. I am is. just, I'm going to throw something good. out there for you guys. <laughs> you notice that... These seem to became. We seem to notice these after. I think they're made for a sig. This <laughs> 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 made for uh, a sig P three twenty. Yeah, Chad gets his zinger in for the show. <laughs> Guys, can we just I drop just it already? Oh okay. <laughs> no, don't do that, Zane. Uh, get these gloves. Um, okay, uh, oh, horrible idea. Uh, one of ours actually came up with this, Zane, a uh, former Marine. Mm. And that's great. Keep up the good work, Devil Dog. But uh, mm, mm. <laughs> I I'll pass. I'm going to – I think it uh, comes down to good initiative, bad judgment. Yeah. Well, if, if it makes you feel any better, I did send them an email, and I think they're going to send a pair, so – <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try them out and, and, I hope and see what opinions change, but I doubt it. You know, and the hey, thing Chad? is, is if I really like them, I'll send them to you guys. If all else fails, well, maybe that's you my thing. as a pair of safety gloves for when you're working in the garden or you're working uh, around the house, you know? Yeah, that's well, yeah, because I mean, if you look at them, they're a pair of gloves with hook okay. and loop. Or, no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, sewn to them, okay. So you can but, always pull the stitches out. But part of my block or you of can put on on grip has to do with with you know filling all the little gaps on the gun and all the nonsense stuff I go through. And I just I it's a lot harder to establish a proper grip on the gun with gloves than it is without gloves. Well, my thing is also the manipulation of the controls on the firearm itself. I mean, again, you got gloves on. Uh, yeah, slide release it, is harder. It, mag release is harder, and now your hands are uh, velcroed together. If you got to do a mag change, <laughs> Spread, yeah, mag changes. What if you have a sweater on? I don't know how this is set up, but I think if you put carpet on your walls, you could probably walk around like Spider Man, just climb the walls with these. So. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hoping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. that's that's the thing. Is I mean, it's it's one of those things. Does it work? It better or worse than they actually have advertised. I mean, I it's know. kind of a cool concept, but you really need to try them or have people try them to see. So, I yeah, don't know I mean, for I'd, sure. I'd, I'd check them out in one of our pistol classes. I'd check, I'd check them out. Or the, I don't know about the diversity shoot. I'm not having people put gloves on and on. Just just keep it moving. Have fun and shoot a gun. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not making them wear different sets of gloves. But, I mean, it's interesting. I'll leave it at that. I mean, good luck to them. And if you think you need them as an instructor, hey, get them out there. I know you're not going to use them as home defense firearm. If, you know, you're a person who doesn't shoot a lot, you're not going to put your gloves on first at, when you hear a bump in the night. Well, no, yeah, you put your gloves on, then you get your gun out of the lock box in the, in the drawer of the bed, and then you get your flashlight out and mount it to the gun and then go ready to go. Yeah, yeah. you'll and pick it up around. and make sure, you make sure the Velcro's right. You guys are right. doing this all wrong. You put your plate carrier on, uh. and then you get your <laughs> rifle. Oh, 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 but a lot of plate carriers have Velcro on them. They so do. do you get your hands oh. stuck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but you got somewhere to hold your gloves. You, you, you got somewhere to hold your gloves until you have to put them on. You know, that might be the best thing. If you're at the range shooting or taking some class, you take your gloves off instead of having to set them down and shove them in your pocket, you can just stick them to your plate carrier. Actually, that's a pretty cool idea. Guess what? Yeah. I just came up with something. Don't steal it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yep. So, actually, we don't have any listener feedback that I could find. Uh, we might, but I didn't look. 
because I'm a loser. I, I, could, I couldn't find it because I didn't look. Sounds like me looking for stuff and it sounds like uh, me looking for anything my wife tells me to go get in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't look for it. Couldn't find it. Sorry. Uh, uh, I did throw some news in here. Uh, I wanted everybody to, that didn't already know, which is nobody that listens to this show, that the SHARE Act did pass committee. Uh, it's HR 3668. And the the link in the show notes takes you to the Gov Tracker website, so you can track its progress if you would like. Uh, that's pretty much the only reason I stuck it in there. Uh, and the other news is for episode 200, we are going to have some sort of giveaway, and we will give you the details on episode 200, which will be in two weeks uh, because I'm taking next week off or from the podcast so we probably we will not have a podcast next week uh, so our salaries uh, will all be docked because of your negligence that's right your your zero dollar salary will be docked to zero dollars hmm. i want yes. a raise uh, can i have a 50 percent raise <laughs> we all know how that works if i give you one then i have to give everybody else one <laughs> uh, tony <laughs> It's it's yes. time for your second is for everyone diversity shoot. Hello, my name is Tony Simon, and I'm from the second is for everyone diversity shoot. If you haven't heard of us, what we do is introduce people from every background, every race, every religion. We want you to actually become part of the Second Amendment community by coming to one of our diversity shoots. Our next diversity shoot is October 5th at Gun for Hire Range in Woodland Park, New Jersey. We invite all these people out to come meet people a representative from the NRA ILA. Also from New Jersey groups like CNJFO, CNJFO and um, the Second Amendment Women's Shooting Group. We welcome all people regardless of your background because we want to actually make you a gun owner if you aren't one. And if you are a gun owner, we want you to be a politically active gun owner. Owning a gun doesn't make you a Second Amendment advocate. Advocacy makes you a Second Amendment advocate. And we give you all kinds of ideas of how to be one. If you want to support us and you want to help us out and you're not going to come to one of our events, you can go to diversityshoot.com and donate to uh, at our website. Or you can <laughs> purchase a Second Is For Everyone t-shirt. We still have some on sale um, in white and black. Black ones look really cool. Zane has one. Um, <clears throat> that helps us out a lot. Um, because what I do is pay for food and ammunition at these events. And right now it's still running as a hobby. So if you can help us out, really appreciate it. Follow us on the Facebook page. The second is for everyone. You can also follow Simon Says Train on Facebook and Simon Says Train on Instagram. Uh, it's kind of late for most people, but if you get this Sunday, we're going to have a Minute Man Challenge. We're using any semi-automatic semi-automatic centerfired rifle for the Miniman Challenge. You can go to the Miniman Challenge page or you can go to Sean's page at Black Bag Resources and register. It's going to be $40. It includes, we include the target. We include everything. All you have to do is show up with your firearm uh, and 200 rounds and two magazines. It's going to be a fun day. It's going to be a great day. This is going to be the fifth, of, fifth event and people are really loving these things. So Sweet. come out. Really appreciate it. We're using Dead Man Hand training cards and um, IQ targets from RE Factor Tactical. It's a lot of fun. And you learn a lot about yourself and your equipment. So come out, have fun. See you guys later. And thank you as always. Yeah, I've, I've been watching your pictures on the Instagram. Uh, and oh, those dude. Those shoots actually look like a lot of fun. I mean, it is so much fun. I was, uh, you know, I'm still doing the long-term review on the high point carbine, right? So I right. have that and they sent me some mags and pro mag. I picked up a couple of those and I wanted to test it. And I'm like, this is going to be so God awful boring. Just shooting rounds through a magazine to see if they feed correctly. So I pulled out the deck of cards. I put up this target and 200 rounds later, I'm going, I'm right at nine millimeter ammo. <laughs> I was like, let me cut this out. But it was a lot of fun. And um, you learn a lot about your skill set. One of the guys actually learned how long it's going to take them to actually load switch magazines on the AR because he was keeping the mags in his back pocket, you know, like you would if something went bump in the night and you went to check it out. 
He had an AR mag in his rear pocket. He had an AR mag in the rifle. Boom, 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 boom. Reload. Drops the mag, reaches back, loads it up, charges it, and gets back on target and starts firing again. And it took five and a half seconds. It's like, yeah, it takes longer than you think. You think it's instantaneous. It's not. And he'd never really run it on the clock before. You know what I mean? It, hey, I, I, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you that, you know, see, that's the problem. If something goes bump in the night, I'm not shoving it in a back pocket. It's going, it's going, the, the spare mag's going down the front of the, oh, of the stop, underwear, please man. stop. Oh, <laughs> oh, I need mind bleach. I need brain bleach. I need brain bleach. I said that just oh, for your benefit, God. Tony. Uh, but it's a dude on Super Trooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, thanks for that, Tony. And we are into the wrap up. Send questions or comments to gungearreview at gmail.com. Remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. Check out the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. Uh, be sure to visit the Firearms Insider for reviews and industry coverage, mainly reviews. Check us out on Facebook at Firearms Insider and follow us at Firearms Insider on Instagram. And don't forget there won't be a show next week in preparation of episode 200 and we are out. Really? Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Jeez, Rob. <laughs>